This first video in my Hi-Fi trilogy shows how my Hi-Fi system went from this temporary arrangement when we first moved into this house via a long design process culminating in this overview sketch to the finished cabinet. The cabinet was to be made using white melamine veneered MDF, 19 millimetres thick. The panels and shelves were CNC routed by Laser Made in Thornley, but this still left a lot of machining for me to do. In particular, I needed to route the grooves in the vertical panels for the shelves to slot in and route grooves in the shelves for the vertical dividers to slot in. There were also other machining jobs to do to incorporate some special features into the cabinet, which will be demonstrated in the second video of this trilogy. The kickboards were to be screwed to the base plate, uh, but of course with hidden screws, which involved routing recesses into the back of each kickboard and drilling holes through into these recesses to allow screws to be inserted without them being visible from the front of the kickboards. I should mention that my workshop is in fact a single car garage, so I first had to drive my car outside before I could begin woodworking each day. And at the end of each day I needed to clean up the workshop space to make room to drive the car back in. Of course the machined edges of the various uprights and shelves had raw MDF visible and thus had to be edged with iron-on melamine edging. After ironing on it needed to be trimmed with uh, a router and a file. Then after all the machining I was ready to bring the panels up into the living room and start assembling the whole cabinet in situ by placing the various shelves into one of the side uprights and putting the other upright at the other end and eventually screwing these shelves into the routed slots. There were wires to be glued into hidden slots machined in special places where they couldn't be seen and the purpose of these wires will be seen in the second video of the trilogy. It was mostly a fairly straightforward assembly by just slotting the various shelves and uprights into the previously routed slots, then screwing on the kickboards and the wheels on the bottom. The wooden block you can see in the far lower corner is for the thrust bearing which allows the cabinet to be turned, which you'll see in the second video. The back panel had been routed according to my drawing by LaserMade and it was just a matter then of fitting it to the back, uh, feeding through some of the wires through holes which I had to drill in the back after accurately locating them. And when that was done, finally drilling and screwing the back panel onto the shelves and uprights. With the help of a friend I was able to lift the cabinet upright into position and fit the thrust bearing, after which it was a matter of fitting out the cabinet. One of the items is a very tall open reel tape deck. 
and because the cabinet was designed to be swung out from the wall, there was a risk that this tape deck could overbalance and fall out. Thus I had to design and make a stainless steel bracket which screwed onto the back of the cabinet and hooked into the back of the tape deck to prevent it from falling. Apart from that, it was a matter of fitting the various equipment into their designated cavities.